These are just images from a public service announcement, but they illustrate a sad reality in our country. If you think you can hide your handgun from your kid... Okay, we're coming in! Please, think again. Every day in the United States, eight children and teenagers are killed, and more than 47 are injured with a firearm. Assemblymember Mark DeSaulnier is taking a proactive stance on this issue. He's written AB 2235. It deals with the study and potential use of so-called smart guns that recognize its authorized user. What it will do is take new technology that we believe um, is on the verge of coming to the marketplace in the next two years. It will ask the Attorney General's office to do a study to see if this technology is becoming available and then to monitor it so that when, when it becomes available then there will be a requirement that all handguns manufactured and sold in the state of California will have to have personal identification on them. Biometric access control to handguns for multiple users uh, under the discretion authorized by the owner of the gun is no longer a fiction or a Star Trek technology. Ho Chang of Nano Indent, an Austria-based company doing smart gun research, says that a prototype smart gun could be ready in about two years. New technology allows all the information about the user and what's needed to operate the gun to be stored on a semiconductor printed on special plastic sheets. We envision this, the smart gun can be unlocked to fire within a second with a liability of 99.9%. <coughs> they'll be able to match your palm print to the stock of the gun and the gun literally won't work until it's identified you. The new technology could also potentially protect law enforcement personnel. About 20 percent of officers killed in the U.S. were shot with their own weapons. Seven out of ten adults across the country support legislation requiring the manufacturing of smart guns. That according to a Johns Hopkins Center for Gun Policy study. If the technology is not ready by 2014, the bill would expire. This report was produced by the Speaker's Office of Member Services.